Hello again YouTube, welcome back to the Spencer Peacock Racing YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm going to show you and tell you how you can get involved in the Formula G Championship. It's really really easy, today this video is brought to you by... Okay, for 2020 there is six championship rounds. We have Santa Pod a couple of times. We've got a double header at Alton Park, double header at Donington Raceway, and then we're also back to Santa Pod at the end of the year. Uh, before all that starts, we've got a practice day as well. I'll link uh, the Formula G website into this uh, as well. Um, and we've also got a practice day at the end of the year when everyone seems to like swap cars and have a go in each other's cars. There's nothing pressure, it's a bit of fun. Um, not as serious, so it's quite fun. Um, okay, so for the build of your car, very, very simple. There's a couple of categories. We've got rear-wheel drive, which is what I compete in. Uh, there's all-wheel drive, so you've got a lot of impresses and stuff like that. You've got front-wheel drive class, and then you've got U1, which is the kit car class, unlimited one. So I'm going to tell you how to get involved with the rear-wheel drive with my MX-5, which I use to compete in. So there's, if you want to turn up, all you really need is a hydraulic handbrake or a really good mechanical um, cable handbrake and maybe a welded diff or an LSD if you've got one of those. Um, other than that, that's all you really need. Um, now, I do have the rules uh, here in front of me. Um, just some just some basics, really. Uh, what you need to... The, the main things to keep you safe and the rules... So it's a grassroots road sport, Jim Carner, uh, Formula G. Um, if you can't get your car to this, you shouldn't really be trying to think about motorsport like without sounding disrespectful. Okay, so the first things um, are your seats and your seat belts. Okay, so these are really, really important because this is what keeps you as part of the car. Um, now you can come in a factory fitted OEM seat with a normal three point um, lap belt. Absolutely fine, you can come with that. Or you can fit yourself a bucket seat and some harnesses. So all they've got to be is secure no, none of the webbing's fractured or split or frayed and the seat secure. As simple as that. Really, really easy. Um, and now I'm going to show you mine. Okay, so I'm in the car. So I run a four point harness. Um, it's a three inch harness. Doesn't even have to be branded. Doesn't have to be in date. Uh, my seat is a Sparco Sprint. Just something I picked up on Facebook, I think for a hundred pounds. So nice and simple. Get yourself in the car, strap yourself in get everything nice and tight and you're good to go brings you then on to rule two you need to be able to see where you're going so i'm going to talk about the windscreen just now okay so i'm inside the car now so you need to make sure your windscreen is clean and safe it's secure i'm not going to go anywhere uh, there's a mandatory um sun strip on the top of the car which has got the fuel tapia logo on um you can run without it but your points i believe are not going to uh, count in the championship and it's also good to have it as well um, this is level with my eye line so you can see just here it blocks out most of the sun uh, when it's above you obviously early mornings and later on in the day it does the sun obviously comes down to a slight, slightly lower level um, so that's when you see people either drive with sunglasses on under their helmets or run like a tinted or iridium visors like I do okay so after we've checked the windscreen we're going to step back into like the passenger side of the car really for me um, so we've got rule number three which is battery secure and terminals covered okay so i've got a really simple mount just here i can really pull on my battery and um, both terminals are covered um, i think i've got these both of these for like under a fiver um the terminal covers from halfords i believe um, i'm sure you remember last year or the year before there's that famous video of uh, e46 or e36 on a track day perfect road car and I think he had a can of WD-40 in the boot of his car. And as we all know, uh, same as the MX-5 and the E36s and E46s, most BMWs, in fact, the battery's in the boot. And I think the, bat the can of WD uh, rolled over, arced across the battery terminals and phew, went up in flames. And uh, yeah, not good. And it also comes onto the final rule as well, fire extinguisher. It'll be at least one in the car. Um, it can either be pull operated or have it down here so easy to grab out uh, like mine is and a minimum of one kilogram um so this is what this is this is a nice little powder extinguisher um really important that you're able to grab this if you can don't forget if there's a fire on track you're going to be the closest person to it if it's in your car so you want to one save your car two save the track three get the day running for everybody else again because you're going to feel like an idiot if your, if your car was caught alight because it's a bad 
workmanship or something like that at least you're going to be the one to not be the, the down on everybody's day so important to have it close working and the right type okay at the back of the car now rule number five brake lights they're the only light you need to have on your your car um for the whole competition it's nothing to do with being on track and having your brake lights or anything like that it is all about the safety of being in the paddock and queuing up to go out on track because if you don't run a brake light you're going to stop and the guy behind's going to rear end you and if you're like this all fiberglass it's just going to ruin your car and they're going to be pissed off with you for not following the rules and having brake lights really and it's just obviously if you're coming in a road car great because you're going to have brake lights anyway but um you've got to have a brake light it can either be a center mounted one just one on its own or just a normal pair um i've got nothing behind these so i've literally just got a led strip just cable tied in there um i would show you but it's all sealed up at the back um but yeah i've just cable tied one led strip in there and it's brake light so conform to the regs okay the now with your tires this is rule number six uh the things will attach your car to the ground they do didn't they so uh yes to keep it fair low budget grassroots tires have to be e-marked um just so they're road legal everybody can get their holds on them no like full slick tires or anything like that um obviously that would just make motorsport and this sport really like silly expensive and you can you can do one of these events for like under 200 quid it's so so cheap um, and over only six events for the year, like you're laughing and you're going to become one, the, the events are televised, two, there's a massive social media following as well. Um, and yeah, just so cheap to tires, e-marked, properly inflated, no cords, no bulges, no splits or anything like that. Um, they've just got to be normal road going really. Doesn't have to get any more simple than that. So these are my old Zestinos. Um, yeah, they these can do me like a whole season really. Depends how you drive. Um, but if you obviously you're driving in a road car, don't really go driving home on the same set. Just bring a pair up. What you're going to use on track and a pair to drive home with. Just keep yourself safe. It's not worth getting points for for something so cheap and easy to to get hold of really. Um, and while we're here, we're going to talk about wheel nuts as well. So obviously these are a four stud four by one hundred. Um, the only rule what we have when it comes to wheel studs are no alloy nuts, not a cheap Chinese crap to keep yourself some steel nuts. I think for the MX-5 I paid like 16 quid for a set of, well, for a whole set for the car really. And I think got some spares with it because they were in like a five stud kit. Um, but yeah, the, the alley ones stretch, they, the threads go in them and uh, can vibrate loose. So steel ones, perfect. Nice and simple to get hold of, get them on eBay and yeah. You don't really want to lose a wheel because obviously you're going to do a disc and maybe a lower arm as well and you're going to look like an idiot as well and that is the main thing you don't want to look like okay so that's really the main rules of, other than uh kind of have any fluid leaks or of any kind obviously no brake fluid coolant oil gearbox oil diff oil no fluid leaks whatsoever because one you're going to contaminate the track two people like to spend money on their tires you get the yeah, obviously the zestinos r triple eight r's you get NS2Rs, AR1s, people spend money on their tires. And if you're the idiot who's gonna be dripping oil because you can't maintain a car, you're just gonna piss everybody off, off and you're gonna get excluded from the event. So just don't be an idiot. And if you wanna come compete, you're gonna to wanna to be coming in a good car. So yeah, maintain your car, look after it. Otherwise you're gonna get kicked off the track. Um, also, if you wanna run ballast, has to be bolted down and painted yellow, mark secure. Uh, if you're running mixed fuel like ethanol or anything like that, you just got to speak to the, get involved, speak to the Formula G guys um, and they'll tell you all the main regs on that. But I believe you've got to run an orange sticker and et cetera, et cetera. And if you run a fuel cell, um, you can either have it in the passenger seat, in the boot, you just got to have a bulkhead around it, which you kind of want to have anyway, because if that, you have a crash and that splits, not good. So mine's in the boot, so I've got a fully sealed firewall, firewall even in the boot. So if that did go up in flames, at least I've got that separation um, for me there. Um, car's got to be clean and presentable as well. No coming in like some absolute missiles where it's got like, it looks like a Harlequin Polo or a Golf, whatever they are. Um, you want to look professional. You want your teammates, like obviously if you're coming down with a couple of mechanics or anything, make yourself presentable. Buy yourself a cheap awning. We've got two here, like just common sense really. Like it's such a fun series. And you can either make it or break it for yourself in it. Um, I don't think I've seen anybody ever break it for themselves. So um, 
if you want to get involved, it's so simple. Have a look at the Formula G Championship on Facebook. Have a look on Instagram, um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, type in the Formula G show and you'll see it's all televised, um, which has gone out on like Sky Sports, Front Runner TV, Motorsport TV, whatever it's called. Um, and just have a look what we do and message any of the drivers who you see on social media. And I guarantee they will all be willing to help you out. Um, but yeah, that's how you really build a car. It's so cheap. Like obviously this is my baby. I've had this for a couple of years and I've got the uh, E36 in the background as well, which is just gonna be a sole drift car. So I don't have to smash this one. Um, but yeah, main things, hydro makes your life so much easier. A lot of them rear wheels when you come into an obstacle, so easy. And uh, a world of diff, this one's an LSD. So yeah, depends what you want to run, how the car suits you. And obviously coilovers is a good start, lower the car. Uh, maybe some drop knuckles, drop, I can't even speak, drop knuckles, so it helps with your alignment out. Um, yeah, so, so simple. Um, get involved, it's cheap. Uh, if you're a member, buy the whole championship in one year, it's like £90 for an event. Or if you're a non member, I think it's like £120. But again, have a look at the Formula D website, have a look on the Fueltopia website as well, see the blogs, what people put up about the events, and uh, message any driver, message me. I'll talk to you all night long, I'll tell you how to build a car, help you build a car if you're local to me. Um, come use my workshop, I don't mind. Um, and I'm sure a lot of drivers are the same, but it's fun, it's cheap, and don't even be nervous about coming to an event. I remember my first event, obviously I didn't know anybody, just turned up myself and one other friend, and uh, yeah, we, we loved it, and never looked back since, so it's wicked. I, I, just, I, I could talk to you all day about the FG Championship, Formula G Championship, um, but yeah, drive to an event, or build a pu purposely built track car, throw the car on a recovery truck trailer who knows well your oyster really but okay that's going to end it now this has been like a three minute four minute clip so yeah i'll stop waffling formula g championship on facebook formula.g on instagram i believe and for myself mine's all everything at spence peak racing get involved ask me questions and uh hopefully i'll see you on the track this year one other thing before i go kind of forgot to mention it really uh all the rules everything in detail is on the Formula G website. Like it's really, really easy to find. Um, I just caught sort of like, went through like the main, there's like, got a section of like 10 rules, nine, 10 rules on here. Um, it's so easy to just follow. But have a look on there. Make sure you got everything you need. Get involved, obviously driver license is, is a start. You need one of those. Don't even need a race license. Um, and yeah, everything, everything's on there. So yeah, have a look, have a read. There's, it looks like there's a lot here, but trust me, it's really not. It's not like the MSA Blue Book. Definitely not like that. So uh, yeah, have a look, get involved. And like I said, just message us, get involved.